Hello and welcome to Chicken Bros. My name is David Heath. The Beatles! Why are there done that before? <laughs> and welcome back to our talk about Doctor Who, the brand new series with Shooty Got One and Millie Gibson. This episode is called The Devil's Cord. Whoa, was it heavy? Yeah. Uh, it starts with, I think it was in 1920. That's the, the 1920-something. This guy is giving a music lesson. To this kid, this, this unassuming kid. And then he right. hits this one note, which... Ca called the Devil's Chord, which... Yeah. I don't know what I it's don't called. Know. I don't remember what that note's called. That chord's called in actual music terms, but... I think you call it... Because I just, I just rewatched the episode, so I think it's called a tritone. Probably. Um, but basically, as soon as they hit that note, this creature comes crawling out of the piano. And this... This person looks a lot like the red-headed chick from Hocus Pocus... <laughs> yeah. Just to try to it paint basically a if you mixed if you if you mixed that character with uh the music maestro from DC, you get the maestro. Yeah, which is what this person calls themselves, the maestro. Themselves, yeah. And who uh, I the, them. Right. Who? Me. I'm them. And the kid what was it, like H like what was his name? Henry Arbinger. Yeah, Harbinger. Harbinger. Yeah. So it was all set up and what's the maestro up to? We'll we'll get into that. Um, the doctor ends up asks the Ruby where where she wants to go, and Ruby says she wants to go to the 1960s to see the Beatles and record their first album. And I love how it's like the doctor just looks at her like, like "What you asked? You asked me in all the time and space." And I my mom had this ma had this mate, Akala, love Kala, or what she or I can't remember what her name was like. She had vinyl. She was dead into vinyl, and she. Uh, she always listened to the Beatles. We had all, we had all the albums, and the doctor's like, "That is amazing!" <laughs> and so they go and change to look the part, look like they belong in the 1960s, and their outfits. I'm just gonna say it are groovy. Hell yeah! And so I was a little worried about the doctor, considering he's a black man in the 60s. But thankfully, that didn't come up. Yeah, that, I was surprised that didn't come up, but I'm glad it didn't come up. Well, I mean, it didn't really need to. But anyway, uh, they enter, they exit the TARDIS, and like right on Abbey Road, where that album, I'm pretty sure where that album was shot. Uh, well, the album cover was definitely shot That's there. what I mean. Uh, and so they go to Abbey Road Studios, which it wasn't called that at that time, but it would one, one day be called Abbey Road Studios. And they go to see the Beatles record, but they notice something's a little off when they record. The songs suck. Yeah, and there's like no substance behind the lyrics. It's like not meaningful at all. It's like... Very un Beatles. And then they see and then some, some some other artist. I don't know who it yeah, is. Yeah, I couldn't recognize the name, but like, again, no substance. The, the the music's way off. The lyrics don't make any sense. So, like, they're both like, like what the heck's the going heck? on here? And so they both, uh, I think the doctor sits with John and uh, Ruby sits with Paul to try to discuss what's what music is to them, and they like. They, they kind of they they like explain how they think it should be and how the way music should be, but then they immediately dismiss that idea. You're crazy. Like, yeah. And they're like, okay, something's yeah. wrong here. And uh, so Ruby takes a piano up to the roof of that place and starts playing a song that she wrote for her friend, which is a very friend, beautiful song. And it was like... Yeah, she, she explained that her friend had just gone through a bad breakup, so she wrote the song as kind of like to... As to, mem to as a memorial to that, basically. Right. And as soon as she starts playing, and it's like amazing, the fucking maestro pops out of the. Well, it takes a while. It takes a while before that happens. Like she starts playing it, and like people can hear it, and they start feeling like kind of a sense of emotion run through them. Even the doctor starts feeling it, but then she hits the tritone, and then the ma maestro pops up, and um, the maestro giggles in the same. Arpeggio, <laughs> and the doctor's like, "Oh no, that's not good." And then they both start running away. He's like, "Ruby, I can't fight this." I'm like, "What? Whoa, whoa, you can't!" It's very rare you see the doctor like afraid. Yeah. And so they hide, and they he uses this is an interesting use of the sonic. He uses it to try to cut off the sound in the area. Yep. Uh, but it didn't work. Dead silent, he, like. 
Yeah, dead silent, but it didn't work because they took the tuning fork and put it in the water and it caused up sound. Um, but thankfully, someone starts playing the piano and distracts them. Uh, uh, which but, unfortunately leads to that character's death. Yeah. Um, but essentially, what's happening is the maestro is taking away music in a sense, or yeah. s- music that's mo- meant to convey emotion or c- express a feeling. And. Um, the doctor was like, I can't fight this. He's like, or they're like one of the Pantheon or something. And mm-hmm. that's, I'm, I'm not sure what that means. I'm sure classic Who fans might know what that means. But um, basically this person's like a big deal. And he proves it to Ruby by taking her back to her time. But when they get there, it's like laid waste. It's desolate. It's destroyed. And she's like, this can't be right. This has to be some sort of parallel thing. He's like, no, this is what happens in your time if we don't stop the maestro. All of music gone. Without music, without a way to convey emotion, people go to war angry and having absolutely no idea why. And I thought, wow, that's a really good way to use music as a way of, like, because be, because it's true. I mean, people do use music to express themselves. But I never thought I mean, of it, like, as in, like, if we don't have that, then we'll end up destroying ourselves. That's a very interesting way of thinking about it. I mean, if you think about it, think about it, you can think about it from any angle of life. Like, for example, I'm a Catholic. In church, we sing to God. Our, we have hymns, we have songs that tell God how much we love him, how, mu- how great he is. Or, I'm an I- I'm of Irish descent. The Irish, basically, like, music is how we express our soul because... You know, England took away everything else to express ourselves. Our language, our customs, our ways. So we use music. So Without we, music, who are we? Right. What are we? And so the maestro pops up and they tell the doctor that uh, they are the child of the toy maker. Which is interesting to find out. I guess not. Which yeah. made me wonder. Do you think maybe it was the maestro who picked up the, the tooth? tooth? Maybe, that's but like the and, but then if that's the case, well, I'll, I'll get to that later. But anyway, um, the maestro basically exudes their power on the doctor. Like it, like anytime they play the tritone on the piano, it even affects the TARDIS. Like, oh my gosh, they can even affect the TARDIS. Nobody should be able to do that. Nope. And so, but they, they can. Yeah. So they. Ruby and the Doctor take the TARDIS back to 1963 to try to um, fix all this. And it ends up with this big music battle with the Maestro. The Maestro... Music battle! The Maestro... This is what's interesting. The Maestro takes Ruby... Like, I don't know how to explain this, but, like, the measure lines that you see on sheet music kind of come to life and wrap her up in, like, a rope. Try yeah, to that's kind of how that. that's how that's how um the maestro killed that guy at the beginning. Yeah, just like try I mean, to visualize that, and but she finds that but like they find out that she Ruby has like this secret song, song within her. Yeah, she starts vocalizing notes, but she's not doing it. It's just coming out of her, and then it's the Carol of the Bells, which we remember we heard in Church of Ruby Road. Um, and the daughter's like the day she the so, like, like Christmas the day she was born. How can a, how can a simple then, person have that much power? He couldn't have been there, and the doctor's like, "Who?" who? And like, the, it's being like very the vague first, about the, the oldest one. The eldest, yeah, the eldest one is like, "What are we talking about here?" And then it's all very vague, and then they go into that music battle. Ruby and the doctor are shredding on the piano. The maestro is playing the violin. The Abbey Road piano. The Mrs. Mills. Oh, she was a girl. We had a time, me and Mrs. Mills. <laughs> And so the doctor says that there's a forbidden chord that can lock away the maestro forever, and he has to get it exactly right, and he plays it, plays it, plays it, plays it, plays <laughs> note it. Note by note up, by note. Until he ends up on the last one, and he hits the wrong one. Oh, I hated that. And I was like, damn it! Yeah, I was like, oh man, I didn't think he'd fail at that. But So the piano gets smacked away in the hallway, and then both the doctor and Ruby are getting trapped in instruments. And of course, who comes across the piano... John, John and, and Paul. Paul and they finish the chord because they know that song in their hearts and then they play it and then the maestro gets trapped in the piano just before they go away they say the, the one, one who waits is who coming the one who waits is coming <sighs> and that's the second mention of this supposed one who waits like 
and, and at this point, it just makes you wonder who's the one who waits. Does it have anything to do with Ruby? Is that Mrs. Flood? Is that the mom in the in the flashback? Or is it that actress that keeps popping up in a bunch of different roles? What's going on here? And of course, the, the answers aren't in this episode because that would be too soon. Yeah, that's the fun of Doctor Who is that everything builds up to something. Yeah, but thankfully they fit, they've restored uh, music in time, and. It goes out on this awesome uh, music number, which is what's that song called? Like, I don't remember, a twist but it was at a... the end. Yeah, there's always a twist. There's always a twist. There's always a twist at the end. Yeah, and when they say twist, they mean like the dance move, the twist. Yeah, the twist. Yeah, and then there's this really cool bit when the Doctor and the Ruby are going back to the TARDIS and they dance along Abbey Road like as if it was a piano. Yeah, it was I love awesome. how like I love how they like they do the tune and then the Doctor closes the door just before the tune finishes and then the TARDIS doors finish it but I'm dumped <laughs> <laughs> just in case you forgot the TARDIS is sentient and she's a clever girl and that's the devil's it's like Matt cord. Smith sa- it's like Matt Smith says oh you sexy thing <laughs> and uh yeah I, I, this I gotta say that I mean, I'm, this is the only time in my life of being a Whovian that I'm actually caught up with a series and I'm watching it as it's coming out same. But it's exciting uh, seeing a new episode and then waiting to see what happens next. Like, I like this show. It's exciting. It's exciting. <laughs> um, but yeah, and and you know, me and Noah. Well, I, I don't know if Noah followed this philosophy. I kind of forced it on him when we were watching these episodes. But I personally don't like watching the next time on Doctor Who's. I want everything to be kind of a surprise in that regard. Because I mean, I see where you're going. I see where you're coming from. Like you don't you want to be completely one hundred percent, like that's kind of why I don't watch trailers that much anymore. Mm-hmm. Which makes going to the movies a pain in the ass, but whatever. But at the same time, if you don't watch the next time, then you miss the end credits, and the end credits have my favorite part of the theme song, the middle eight. Yeah, I, if, that, but if, that's but that's just a me thing. Yeah, but um, yeah. I, when it comes to Doctor Who, I, I'd like to not know what's going to happen in the next episode. Like, even the title, if, even if I know the title, it can be vague enough to where I don't really get it. Which, I True. do know the title of of this Friday's episode, do you? Nope. It's called Boom. Boom. Interesting. Wow. I guess we'll see what happens. Like, the baby boom or a literal boom? Don't know. That's why I like keeping it blind. But anyway, we will see you when we see that, and we'll... Oh, yeah. What do you think, Noah? Uh, out of ten. Ten out of ten, babes. Yes, ten out of ten on Abbey Road. All right. We'll see you later. Pukar! Pukar!